Hi, we are Gemma and Campbell and this is our brand new tiny camper, Freddy. As you may know, you'll usually find us trundling around in our home on wheels, Ellie the Eldest. However, she is currently under the weather awaiting repairs. Not to worry though, as this week you join us as we take our brand new tiny camper on our first maiden voyage and try out some good old Scottish island hopping. The islands in question being Isla, Jura and the incredibly rugged Isle of Arran. Get ready to see some of Scotland's most scenic landscape as we experience the trials and tribulations of living in a low roof camper van that isn't quite fully converted yet. If you're new around here and want to see more of our Scotland adventures then hit subscribe and join the gang. But for now let's check back in as we settle in to van life on Isla. Alright gang, welcome back to Isla. I've actually just finished up a little bit of a run as you guys know we're doing a half marathon in July so we just smashed out a wee 12k along the beach. And the sun's even started shining for us. What a day. Gemma's just finishing up her run as well, so while she's doing that, I'm gonna get the shower set up, get freshened up, because I'm a little bit sweaty, as you can see. And then we have some big, exciting plans, because it's been miserable the last couple of days, so I am buzzing that the sun has decided to show its face again. watched last week's episode you will remember that we've basically just brought our little transit custom across to Isla for the first time ever and we're exploring around the island and um, it's been a mixed bag so far we had successes where it was gorgeous weather when we arrived and we had some pretty bad failures our airbed burst however we did actually just find out this morning that the local hardware store does sell them so we managed to pick up a replacement and hopefully we'll get a good night's sleep tonight. I do have to say though, even on a flat airbed, our van is like so comfortable and the little setup we've got going on is so comfortable that I still had a pretty decent night's sleep last night so it's not all bad. Yummy, that looks good. Yep, yeah, some Mexican rice out of a packet, peppers and then just some cashews just to beef it up a wee bit. Hopefully it's enough. Just like that guys, it spoke too soon. The rain is quickly coming in. Oh dear, pack up quick, let's hit the road. Okay, so driving round Isla, they do seem to have a love for Highland cows. Like, I've never seen so many in the fields. It's like every second field, and they're full of babies at this time of year. Yeah. Aye, but look at the one look over there. Oh, well, that's Toti. That's a tiny baby. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's none left. Oh, that's not, that's not oh, even. Guys, honestly, we... If you remember in last week's video, we headed to cake cupboard where we'd heard that they took good cakes and it was closed. So today we went back again to actually have a look for it. Again it was closed. So we thought well we drove past this little one that said that they did tablet but it looks like there's none there. Should I go and ask them if they've got any tablet left? Yeah. Oh we just like I just love I love supporting these little things and also I love a little sweet treat. Any luck? They have some. Yeah. We soon realised that what we had accidentally stumbled upon was a cute little souvenir shop that sat in the porch of someone's house. They stocked all kinds of trinkets and goodies, including multiple different flavours of homemade tablets. So of course we just had to try some for ourselves. Okay, so they actually do bank transfers and PayPal as well if you don't have enough cash, but I just love coming to these small islands and getting things like this. I think it's so quirky and it's so unique. And the fact that it all like operates in such an honesty system, it's just such a trusting community-based kind of thing. And I just love it. I love supporting these small businesses. And it means I obviously get a little sweet treat as well. I just love it because some people are actually thriving so much from these that they can now like work from home, spend more time with their family. I'm happy to support that. <laughs> right, so it has been quite a whiskey free trip to Isla so far. I did actually, last week I got a free sample of Laphroaig, which was my first ever sit tasting of Laphroaig, and I've got to say it's very good whiskey. But it'll be interesting to see how this tablet this matches up. Mmm, peachy. Is it? Mm -hmm. Smoky tablet. Usually when it's whiskey tablet, it's just a little bit of a whiskey flavour, but yeah, that is like, a bit and it's a peaty, peaty whiskey. That's tasty. Quite um, dry and like crumbly tablet. Mm. A really good kick. Mm 
Mm. Mm, that's actually lovely. Very tasty. You're mm. into your PT whiskey, you'll love this tablet. Mm. Oh, I love supporting small businesses. <laughs> so I think we have just decided on the name for this van. Thank you so much for all of your suggestions because there were so many good ones and it really gave us some food for thought. We were kind of thinking of something along the lines, a bit like Ellie, you know, Ellie the eldest. F. Board. So we have decided to go with Freddy. Meet Freddy, I feel chuffed with that. I like that name. I think Isla just really took me by surprise. Actually, I was not expecting it to be just so vast, I guess. Like, I thought it was going to be a wee small island, but it is actually really big. And the majority of it is just like that. It just seems that it's like peat box. It really reminds us of the Isle of Uist, especially South Uist, where you get onto that and it's just like a straight road. What well, feels like, you know, miles and miles and miles. But despite it being so vast, there does also seem like a really lovely community here. Like a few little small towns and they all have like their own little bars or cafes and it's just really, really cute and quirky. It's a beautiful island and even though the weather hasn't really been showing us the best I think it's moody and I still absolutely love it Some size bit. Honestly guys the weather today has just been ridiculous how much it's been up and down. It's just starting to rain again. It was glorious sunshine. We drove all the way back to Bali Grand where we're going to be catching a ferry first thing tomorrow across to Jura. And we're hoping to have some sunshine to cook our dinner with. But no, the rain's come back on. It's actually stopped right now, so I need to try and jump out and cook super, super quick. So we had bought some tzatziki the other day in the shops. And we grabbed some salad, we've got some peppers, some kind of chicken shawarma stuff, and some pitas. So we are going Greek tonight. We shot ourselves in the foot when we talked about how much fun this tiny van life was. <gasps> Not yet got an internal cooker sorted, so I'm out here. Yeah, so at least it was only a drizzle. If it was pouring rain, yeah. I think I'd be going for a chip shop. There's no way I'd be cooking it here. My new van. What's that about, guys? Come on. That's the bird he's wishing you good luck. Oh, is that good luck? Good luck in your That's new good. van venture. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, how did you sleep last night, baby? Do you know what? Not great, <laughs> all things considering. I actually think I had a better night's sleep when I was on the floor. Comfortable in the air bed, although we felt like maybe yours was like up slightly and mine was like I was like on the ground almost. Yeah. But I wasn't on the ground, I was obviously still on the air bed, but. The way that it was like sitting, it was very like kind of lopsided as if there was more things under your side of the bed than mine. Normally something I would say was a bit of a nightmare. I actually loved this morning. I just had a full freedom shower out the back of the van. It was freezing, it was windy, but it's really woke me up and I feel so connected to nature. I think that's what I love about this van is like, I'm filling in my whip journal every day and it says, how long did you spend outdoors? And I'm like, literally all day. <laughs> Literally have to do everything outside but I kind of love that even though the weather is not like sunny. And so to any eagle-eyed viewers that may have noticed that we did actually move spot last night, we had to. The midges were just insane. We were just that bit too sheltered so we had to move back and remind ourselves why we do actually love the wind because it keeps the midges away. Beep beep. Traffic jam. It's such a chunky wee hey Jordan. I know they're so Cute. It's clearing up guys, clearing up. I can see blue skies. See apparently this island out here is actually quite, I guess, important in Scottish history. It was where the inauguration of the Lords of the Isles happened back in about the 12th century. There's not actually a lot remaining of it. It's like two or three little buildings. It's not like a big massive grand castle. If you're into your Scottish history or you're a McDonald and you want to come and learn more about your McDonald heritage, this is a really important part of Scotland to come and do that. Yeah, it's interesting. So it seems that it's not just like a castle, it's actually an entire community lived out here in the middle of a lot. Which on a day like today, come on, you get views like that, that is some prime real estate right there. Oh wow. 
Wow, can I actually see the tomb slabs? Yeah, it's really cool actually. I wasn't expecting it to be this kind of like detailed almost. There's like kind of information plaques all the way around the walking tour of it. Yeah, there it is there, you can see it. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll just buy tickets on it, probably. Because it reminds me of the one that we did in Ireland when we went across the Shannon Estuary. That's right, you just drive on, get your tickets, sit in your car the entire time and then get off on the other side. All right, it's 28 quid, 28 pound return. I guess they just don't ticket you over there because there's nothing to do on Jura anyway, so you always need to come back to here. All right, I can feel it rocking already. We've not even set sail. This is a very strange and interesting ferry crossing. The boat is tiny. <laughs> this is where they've got us parked, like under the off ramp. <laughs> oh, man. I can feel it rocking, and it's still dark. I'm hoping it's just going to fly across there because I'm, it's feeling a bit dodgy. I couldn't imagine doing this in early. Like it's so small. It's getting off. <laughs> So the funny thing is, I just mapped it to like see how to get up to the island of Jura. There's literally one road, and that's it. I'm okay, you um, So I don't think I need Google Maps. I'm not going to get lost. There's one road, and it just goes all the way up to the other end of Jura. With no real plans of what to do in Jura, we decided to take a drive as far north as possible along the island's winding and scenic roads. We were shocked by how stark the contrast Jura was compared to his neighbour island of Isla, with the vast majority of the island consisting of nothing but peat bogs and locks. The name Jura actually descends from the north word for deer, and we soon found out why. It turns out that Jura is home to about 7,000 deer and only 190 people, and with the huge expanse of wilderness that can be found across the island, it is very easy to see why. And then we have a gang, Sleet. We have had all the seasons. It is now sleeting, honestly. Again, half an hour since I last spoke to you. And this is the weather again. So they weren't joking when they said it was going to snow. It actually is. I know, it's crazy, man. What? I think we've made the most of the time that we have had in Jura and we've managed to definitely get out and about in the sun as much as we could do. Yeah. But this has got pretty heavy. Yeah, I think when we've done everything that there is to do in Jura, like when they say it's remote and you look at it on the map and it looks remote, it is crazy remote. I think it's one of the most remote and like untouched places in Scotland that I've ever been to. You know, you go north of Craigton and it is literally just nothing. There's no houses or anything out there. There's some when you go right up the north on the coast. But if you look to the left when you're driving north, it is just rugged, untouched, unspoiled landscape. It's beautiful. But there's absolutely nothing to do. So we're just gonna get the ferry back across to Isla, and then it's time to head on to our final island of this adventure. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. I was just asked to reverse onto the boat first time for this. <laughs> at least I've got parking sensors. As I said, did you not do it? Oh, no, yeah, true, it's very true. The journey over to Arran turned out to be an absolute breeze. First of all, we caught a ferry back over to Kenna Craig, where we took a short drive across the peninsula to Clonaig and waited for the final island hopper onto the Isle of Arran itself. Arran! Arran! Island number three! Yes! Now it's funny because I come to Arran like all the time. I've been here almost every single year for the past decade, but it's more on a camping guy's holiday, so I rarely ever leave Brodock and I rarely ever don't have a pint in my hand. So this is going to be a completely different trip to Arran and I'm excited for it. And we actually haven't been to Arran together, so this no. will be really, really nice. That's it. Look at that. Straight off the ferry, <sighs> big bonny castle. Loch Ranza Castle. There you go. Gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah guys, we found this little spot. It's going to be nearby where we're parking for the hike tomorrow. Again, utilising our stealth capabilities in this van. But I think we're going to be up and out before anyone actually even arrives here in the morning. So it doesn't really matter. And yeah, we're just going to get a good night's sleep. I think we need to try and get up early because it's a got, we've got a window of about four or five hours of sunshine. And we want to try and get up to the top of Goat Fell, which is a four hour hike up and down, I believe, maybe five hours. So we need to get up early, 7am, and I'm actually looking forward to it. If it stays as clear as this, 
this, the views are going to be absolutely stunning. So hopefully we get that and we'll see you in the morning, guys. <laughs> Is this scary? Oh. Morning everyone! Honestly, in Scotland it goes one of two ways. It's either howling wind and peeing rain or it's glorious sunshine and terrible midges. I do love the country. Oh, you feel like all I'm doing is whinging about it, but I do love it. Get yourselves one of these midge nets. They make an entire difference to your trip. Might look ridiculous, but they do make a big difference. Run! How <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Little things helping though. You think, yeah? Uh -huh. uh, actually, maybe not when I look outside. <laughs> <laughs> On our way north, we actually jumped in to go outdoors to get. Uh, what did we get? Oh, yeah. We went to get in Gemma Shiwi and we uh, saw this thing called the Thermocell and it was like, keeps midges and mosquitoes away 20 meters. That is worth the money. If that works, I'm going to repatent it and become a multi trillionaire. It doesn't work. I didn't think it would work. I keep thinking it works and then I just see it's because it's a breath of wind came along uh -huh. and then they regroup and go into uh -huh. this. Going for the second attack. It's itchy. The good thing is, you know what the good thing is? It's not raining. It's not raining, but also we're going to set a new record for Goat Fell because we're going to be running up True. it. There she is, baby. Woo. See the peak? So we are half an hour into the walk, 2.3 kilometers. I think that's almost halfway. Um, it's 870 meters, and we've done. Oh, 230 meters, which means we've still got another 520 meters to incline, and we're almost halfway there. It's gonna be a steep finish. Onto the final little stretch now, just as the sun's come out, we're in luck. But this bit actually has like it's set up on kind of a little staircase that has been made by hand. And um, you do see this quite a lot across Scotland on a lot of the hills. And what I find amazing about it is that these giant boulders and all of the other things that like the paths and the gravel paths that you see around Scotland on the hills are all laid by 99% volunteers. Obviously you've got like the mountain rescue helicopter lifting the boulders into position and all that. But the actual labour is all just done by like very kind, generous people that just love the great outdoors. I want to try and enable other people to be able to get out and enjoy the great outdoors as well. And it's all just done through like charities and volunteer work. So shout out to anyone that comes up these hills and lugs boulders about to make these paths because they make it a lot easier. Actually came, sat in the standby queue, went and got another ticket, and then if they've got space, they'll squeeze you in. If not, you just need to wait there. We also heard them say that caravans and motorhomes you can't actually use on standby, so very grateful that we had um, little Freddy take us on yeah. standby because otherwise we wouldn't be able to leave until tomorrow. <laughs> good decision. And so that is us back on the mainland, guys. What a trip we've had. Honestly, this island, Hoppin' Malarkey, is just so much fun. And I think having Freddie to do it in, it's just making it all seem like so much fun adventure again. Um, it's been so easy to get around with. I have a small van, which has been lovely. Although we do miss Ellie, and I hope that the next time we see you, we are going to have Ellie back. Just 
across. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to see you next week. And I hope you have a great week. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again in the next one.